Hey, what's up? We should be live. Let me know you can hear me well because I'm using a different mic setup this time. Uh, let me go ahead and check on my on my own. Uh, so I'm back finally uh, from vacation. Feels like it was a long time, but it was actually just a week. Um, let me see here. Okay, it's starting. Okay, good. I can hear myself, which means it works. Yeah, so I'm expecting a very small attendance today, which means that's actually a good opportunity to ask as many questions as you can, because I'll have much more time for every comment. Um, so I just wanted to, because I scheduled this uh, stream very spontaneously today. I wasn't sure what piece of content I'm actually even going to share, if at all. I uh, thought I won't share anything, uh, but ended up um, deciding, okay, I'll do, <laughs> I'll, I have time to just film one video. So that's going to be Saturdays. And today uh, it's going to be just a quick live stream. It's actually holiday today. Uh, evening, so um, I'm going to wrap this one up in an hour or so. Uh, we won't go beyond uh, 4 p.m. my time. Uh, I'm not even sure what time it is, Eastern time. Let's see, Eastern time now. Uh, let's see here, 8. Yeah, so we won't go past 9 a.m. Eastern time, and I know that's usually the time we begin the live streams, but I had to start uh, a little earlier today, so again, my apologies. Hey, Luis, how are you doing? Uh, thank you so much for the kind words. It was a Great, great vacation. Very fun. I can share a few photos with you later uh, if anyone's interested to see. Uh, I'll probably should probably post also on Instagram and so on. Uh, did a lot of stories dur during this week. Um, it's so funny because people tell me I always promise I'll share, and then I end up not sharing anything during the vacation because I'm kind of like that. I get sucked into the experience of just not not doing anything and actually being on vacation, which I'm actually happy about. Uh, same goes for painting. It's very rare for me to actually paint uh, on during a vacation just because, I don't know, I'm, I get so carried into the just kind of letting go and having fun. But I did make it a point to share quite a lot of stories, so hopefully you've seen them. Uh, hey, Crystal Martin, Art, how are you doing? Uh, welcome back. Thank you so, so much. I'm here. Good morning to you, too. Um, hey, Aaron. Uh, oh, an hour early. Too bad I'm still stuck going to work. Oh, sorry, sorry about that. Um, you you only have to listen. So if you have some kind of a setup where you can actually listen, or maybe on the commute, feel free to. Uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's a very common one. There's there's a couple of common autocorrect ones. Uh, Martin. One is Lion. One is. Uh, Luton, like the airport. <laughs> That's funny. The first time I discovered it, I was I was actually there way before I even started this YouTube channel, I think. Um, and then it's sort of clicked to with me later. It just, you know, some some phones just auto correct to that, which is hilarious. Uh, hey, mystery for me. <laughs> hey, brother, love from Pakistan. Thank you so, so much for being here. And yes, Aaron, and by the way, I'm using the normal mic, just a different setup, but it's the same mic. It's a mic. It's not a computer. So that's good news. You'll hear me hopefully better. I do have a weird issue with the MacBook's um, microphone. I don't know why the internal microphone stopped working with my stream yards. I can't do any of that for some reason. Can't record videos using my Mac with my audio. I don't know why, so I'll have to use a different mic, not the internal one. And I can't use this over the table over there, so I'll have to probably use the camera, the webcams mic, which is not as good, but okay, we'll live with it. Um, but yeah, that's not today. Today is going to be decent. Uh, hey, Yvonne, how are you doing? Good morning from Michigan. I really uh, am so happy to see so many people here. I was actually expecting much fewer because I just scheduled it today. I didn't. Usually I do this one day in advance, but uh, this time I just did, wasn't sure I'll, I'm going to even go live. Um, so yeah, thank you so, so much. Big Hard Books and Classics. Glad to be here. Thanks. Thank you so much. Uh, Robin Hicks, hi from South Australia. Um, and uh, you say big hard books and classics from Portland, Oregon. Hey, White Reza, how are you doing? Uh, hey, Lisa T, good morning from uh, California. Thank you so much. Uh, hey, Petra, I love the lion misspell. Yeah, I should just switch my, my profile pic everywhere to a lion and just <laughs> have people call me lion. That's so funny. Uh, Brian, I'm doing well. How are you? I'm um, going back from vacation. Actually, I'm going to have a lot of updates. Probably, sorry, <laughs> next week is due for some uh, just talking videos. Uh, actually, 
it would have been easier to film one of those today and have it for Saturday. But um, I just want to get my thoughts more organized. Um, having a lot of it's always like this after vacations. I have a lot of thoughts, a lot of things that are bound to change. If I can give you one spoiler is and it's something I've been talking about for a while, but I am um, considering being a little more fluid with the schedule. Um, so th things may change. Uh, as I reprioritize uh, work and life, uh, all of these things together, actually. So I'm going to spend different ratios of time of work, working and relaxing and uh, doing health stuff and all of that. And within work, within work time, I'm going to change some things around as well. So I may focus on other things, things that are, are hopefully like my North Star is to to improve the career over the long term uh, so it's always going to be something that hopefully you will benefit from as well because i'll be better at what i do and better at teaching and all of those good stuff uh, thank you so much brian super long answer to your short question denise uh how are you doing morning from the rocket city huntsville alabama thank you for being here and hey again alan so happy to have you here uh hey resting rich face good morning we run from south carolina Thank you so, so much. Hey, Sandra, how are you doing from West Virginia? Uh, Margaret Swedian, good morning from Wisconsin, USA. Love your videos. Thank you so, so much. And I did see a lot of new subscribers recently, so I have to thank you for that as well. Uh, we're on 134K. That's amazing. That's really amazing. And so I've been getting a lot of comments of like new subscriber, recent subscriber here, which is great fun. Um, comment in the, in the chat if you're new. Just do a hashtag new. I'm curious to see. Um, uh, mystery for me says brother uh, gives me two advice on behalf of your oh, okay give me two advice on behalf of your life experiences interesting just general advice huh uh, wow that's a that's a good question if I could just choose two general life advice um, one thing that comes to mind I'm I, I, there's probably something that's more important or more pressing but one thing that comes to mind is to really listen to yourself um and that not in a cliche way and hey okay big handbooks and classics so you're new here thank you so much um what i mean by that is if you can work towards mystery uh eliminating all external voices and whatever they tell you and try and listen to yourself and what you want to do in your life in general you know um and it's not necessarily as easy as, as it sounds easy, but it's not that easy, actually, uh, because there's a lot of external influences, a lot of uh, people that whether they want they want your best or not, you know, it's not that doesn't necessarily come from a bad place in society in general. Everything will push you in certain directions. And if that's your direction, great. That's the wisdom of listening to yourself. But if it's not, you have to be aware. It's not easy to develop that self-awareness. And I'm working on it every day. I'm, I'm, I'm coming to new uh, realizations and conclusions about how I want to spend my time and what I want to do. So I would say that that inner voice, and it's very easy to think something's your inner voice, go with that and end up being led astray still. Um, so I don't know exactly how to develop that, but that's that's a journey to explore, right? Whatever it is for you, I, I can't recommend like a list of steps. There is no such thing. I think that's one. That's good enough. Don't need a second one just to make up a second one. That's a good one. Uh, Luis says, by the way, bought a new uh, tin palette. The way uh, paint behaves in the tin mixing areas are kind of interesting. Oh, yeah, cool. Share, share uh, more of what you mean by that. Um, if you're used to, so what are you, are you used to? Um, like uh, what you call that material, I keep forgetting, but that different material that everyone uses uh, sometimes. Uh, I, I'm so used to tin palettes now that I can't even like tell the difference. But if you're used to a different type of surface, then yeah, definitely. Um, but let me know if you're having trouble with that. There are a few tricks that can help. Uh, Crystal Martin Art, uh, Sandra, okay, hi from West Virginia also. I'll try and remember that. Um, sometimes I'm bad with linking up actual names with usernames, but I'll try uh <clears throat> let's see here uh af good morning from mexico city thank you so much for being here af uh fariz says good evening from indonesia thank you for being here and thank you to everyone who's new uh, new ish a month or so yeah that's new that's new because that's when i posted that video that got a lot of views on overworking that's when a lot of people uh new people came aboard so yeah that that's considered new i guess 
uh dazzling accent hello how are you doing uh ts utami hello all from indonesia wow we have serious indonesian representation here uh mr for me yes right we'll try rather thanks for a nice answer yeah you got it you got it my friend thank you so so much yeah so just to give you kind of a brief rundown of the last week um we went to morocco for a vacation um about a week feels a little longer but it was actually maybe eight days i believe in total something like that because it's weird we landed that the flight back here was late uh at night and because we flew west no, uh, east sorry flew east from morocco to israel it's weird with the time zone so you end up arriving at a later time than you actually feel like it is you're going from a time zone that is minus three compared to home uh so it's just really weird you lose a couple of hours in the, the night just disappear void hours um so yeah but it was great fun we visited all the main places uh the main one i guess being marrakesh um we've been to rabat we've been to uh Meknes, we've been to a uh, whole bunch of places, Casablanca, of course, Eureka. Um, I will share, like, I think I'll share a gallery post on Instagram with maybe uh, 10 photos or so, just showing different views and stuff. It was, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, a very interesting country, uh, more modern than some would think, but on the other end, also a lot of poverty and that kind of a thing. It will depend if you're in a big city and the countryside and, you know, everything else, north, south, like the north coast is very different from the south, um, for sure um ts good evening thank you so much olivia gray hello from pennsylvania usa thank you for being here uh martin watkinson highly run in order to loosen up what are your thoughts on not doing a pencil drawing but just using the brush yeah that's a great that's both a great exercise just for fun if you want to give it a try and it could be an actual bona fide technique if that's how you want to paint for example young chen who has a very good channel on watercolor painting one of the best painters here um and, and teachers, I guess, he uh, does that a lot. He just paints a very thin wash and that's his pencil drawing, right? That's actually something I've been wanting to experiment for a while now. The one disadvantage is you actually have to, to be able to capture the, the general, you know, line work accurately. And that's sometimes hard without any guidelines, right? Um, but I do like that idea, just using the brush. So what I was referring to so far was actually drawing with the brush, but you can just go for it without a drawing. I've, I've done that. I actually have a video on painting without a drawing. It's a different mind shift. It's very fun. I do that from time to time, usually with very clear um, subjects. So if it's a portrait that's really divided in a clear way into a, a clear value structure, uh, that's when I would do that the most. Um, for large scenes, it is harder, but it is possible, um, especially if you're doing a landscape that has a lot of more abstract elements to it, you know, trees, fields, crops, and so on. Uh, I think that's great. That's a great way. The, the answer is, again, you are the only person who can find that answer. So you have to give it a try and see how it works for you and give it a try a few times, right? Because sometimes something won't work the first time. Sometimes you'll hate it and, and that's okay. But uh, if you see potential there, try it out a few times. But a great idea, in my opinion. Uh, Luis says, I'm used to plastic palettes. Okay, yeah, plastic. Uh, the way paint beads up in tin palettes helps a lot in making sure my mixes aren't contaminated. The way the paint beads helps. Interesting. In what way? To me, I just use that bit of a wool, like metal wool thing, and I scrub it very gently so it doesn't bead as well in, in my tin palettes, just like in my plastic one. Uh, but yeah, that's interesting. Uh, Richard, how are you doing? Welcome aboard. Uh, Tambo Artwork, thank you for carving out uh, some time for this live stream. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, hello from Texas. Yes, it's going to be a little shorter this time. So around an hour round, because in the evening we go to my folks for uh, dinner and so on and holiday. And we have actually a few uh, busy days ahead of us. So I want to make sure that I get everything done on time. Uh, Manette, how are you doing? Good evening to you too, my friend. Thank you for being here. Uh, Arch Archidream, <laughs> Dream. Uh, hi from Italy. Thank you for being here. Uh, oh, that's cool. Your your profile pic is actually that Archidream. That's really cool. Neat. Uh, Nettie, I look forward to your live videos every week. I'm from Pennsylvania. Thank you so much. 
uh really do appreciate it uh joanna owen what are your favorite watercolors uh if you're talking about brands i have a lot i like a lot of brands daniel smith is kind of my go-to i found the most paints that i really enjoy using uh, but i like a bunch of them uh, and as for actual colors just the basics primary colors blue red yellow that's a very simple in that way uh, i do find that again something i talked about recently is that cyan yellow magenta uh, triad works well. So if you're using a something like a phthalo blue or uh, even a cerulean, but something like a very bright blue, it'll give you more options than something like French ultramarine. Uh, and then you want to use maybe a lemon yellow if you want to get, again, more options because you can make that a bit of a warmer yellow, but it's very hard to get from a warm yellow to that. If you want dark nickel, azo yellow is perfect. Uh, and then for the red, it's quinacridone rose in Daniel Smith, which means it's just that magenta. Um, the name of the color, again, that's something very common and important. The name of the tube, the name of the paint on the tube doesn't matter as much as the pigment, right? So uh, PV19, that would be my uh, red. And then I like to add some pyrrole scarlet to get a fiery red that is very hard to mix just in and of itself. Um, so I'd say basic colors plus a few ones that, that are very strong and, and saturated that are impossible to mix, uh, especially in watercolors, very hard. Uh, but I will say, you know, I, I usually prioritize values over colors anyway. So to me, it's a bit of a different case. Um, Aaron, I'm from Pennsylvania as well. Ought to see so many of us Amish here. Oh, funny. Um, <clears throat> Uh, Kelly Halligan, good morning from sunny Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Thank you for being here. Uh, Luis, hello, Liron. What is your advice for watercolor paints that lack flow? Um, so so the paints, the actual paints lack flow, or do you mean like paintings that lack flow? Um, the advice would be to add more flow, so just add more water, um, even with water. Okay, so that's like pigments that are very hard to reawaken or just pigments that are very, you know, earthy, right? So if you're talking about earthy, so like yellow ochres, some yellow ochres are like that. Honestly, I could not to this day find a good solution to that. Some people will say maybe use gum Arabic, but I haven't tried that. So I don't know if it will actually work. Uh, but yes, some pigments are just that they're very earthy. And even if you're using a lot of water and you're doing quick brush marks, you'll still get some brush streaks on paper, right? You can actually see them, like almost like you're painting on bad quality paper, right? And that's another thing to make sure you're painting on good quality paper. But it's a very weird thing. Uh, I tend to not like to use these paints, even though I like the way they look. I love how yellow ochre looks, but it, so many brands make it like hard as stone. It's so hard to use. Um, so yeah, uh, my suggestion honestly would be to find a paint that looks the same, but has better flow. And that's possible. Sometimes one brand's paint will have good flow. I'll give you an example. Yellow ochre. Um, I used Sennelier's professional grade. I used something similar by Daniel Smith. They all harden in the palette like crazy, very hard to work with, and also turn out a little grainy, right? Uh, but I had a very good fortune with M. Graham. So a different brand, same color, maybe even the same pigment, but what they use in their mix, like the honey and whatever it is, that can help. So find the one that does not do that. It, that's just why would you work against your materials or why have them work against you, right? So just find ones that don't do that. Uh, the, the typical advice would just be add more water, right? Make sure you use good paper, add more water. But that's not always a possibility. And one thing to have in mind is you can always add more water and do more washes. So you go light, but you do more glazes. So you end up a little darker. Uh, that's another quick one. Uh, resting fridge base, a Mr. Magic Eraser works well uh, on new metal palettes. Interesting, yeah. Uh, I do have some Magic Eraser here. It's really neat. Very useful as well. Hey, Betty. Greetings from Augusta, uh, Georgia, right? GA. Oh, man, I keep forgetting. <laughs> Terrible. I think it's Georgia, yeah. Yeah, I'm good. I think it's Georgia. Everyone will correct me. Um, Martin, uh, many thanks for your considered thoughts. Yeah, definitely. My pleasure. That's why we're here. That's why we're doing these live streams. Uh, Blaze Maxim says, hi from Quebec. Super cool. I love the spelling of Quebec with that line above the E. Um, old tune. Liron, do you find overcast daylight scenes very challenging to paint? Yeah, the answer, the general answer is yes. What I find with these is that I have to change them up. 
Uh, you can decide to paint them, and sorry, I'm bringing the mic a little closer, so if the volume goes up, <laughs> watch out. Um, but I will say that, yes, I find that I need to change them up sometimes. I just need to invent something to make it more more of an interesting scene or more of like a, an impression that I like. Because I do like strong contrast. So when you have overcast weather, it's just it's non-existent or not as existent, right? The the and the the really challenging part with that is that sometimes it can make the values less clear and and more of nuance like it's this dark instead of having like a dark well, let's say instead of having a light a mid a slightly dark and a really dark with overcast scenes you end up having a light a little bit light, a darker, a little bit darker, a little bit darker, a little, and all of these different areas have different values to them. Just a big mess. I don't like that as much. Um, I think it is very worthwhile to train yourself to be able to paint that, which I still don't feel like super comfortable with. It is useful to train yourself to be able to, in a pinch, paint an overcast scene, but I would much rather paint the scenes that I enjoy more. Um, I will add to that, if you're actually outside and painting an overcast scene, but you're physically there playing air, there is so much magic to seeing the place on location, and it usually leads to much, much better results. So that's a kind of a trade-off, because you see the colors more vividly, even though it's an overcast day. Uh, so you can do so much with it, like just fun stuff, um, if you're already doing a plein air. I hope that helps, hey, Joanna. Thank you so much. I, um, uh, I mean, it's my pleasure. <laughs> thank you for the question. Um, Resting fish base. How dirty do you allow the water to get before changing? Um, I almost never change during a painting process unless it's a very big painting and I took like a break for a day and I come back and the first wash was very saturated and the water is tainted. Then I'll switch. Uh, I'll replace them. But usually for a painting that's the normal A4, A3 size, I don't. Um, I don't change them at all. Now, I do have a pretty uh, substantially bigger water bucket than some people have. Like you can see right here, I have the Magello three well water bucket, which I need to add to my list of materials. I'm working on a consolidated list for you. Um, but yeah, I would say if you're using like a small cup, maybe change it after the first wash or after the second wash. When you start introducing some darks, it will get dirty very fast now with that uh when i do plein air i use just a small cup and it carries me through the entire painting so it's not that big of a of a deal the only time you really want clean water is in the first washes because once you start adding darts the dirt doesn't really hurt anything you know so in the beginning have fresh water and then just replace between every painting that's what works for me at least uh, Louis says, I meant the pigments uh, in my question about painful. Yeah, uh, hopefully I answered that correctly, right? I think I have. Uh, Johannes, hey, Leron, good to see you again. Good to see you again, too, my friend. Thank you for being here. Uh, Margaret, do you think a tin palette is better than ceramic? Oh, yeah, ceramic. That's the other material. So I don't have enough experience with ceramics, uh, ceramic palettes. Uh, I did hear from a lot of people that... that they prefer them. So I would at least tell you to not do what I do and actually give it a try. I'd give a ceramics uh, palette a try. One thing that's, that's hugely important is to have enough mixing space. So I would actually prefer to use a palette I don't like as much, but it has big mixing space as opposed to one I like maybe the material of, but has small mixing areas. So, so I would prioritize the, the shape of the palette sometimes more because very often people work in these small pools and very small mixing area you need that big area especially if you're going to paint even just an a3 size painting which is i guess something like that i don't know if that helps seeing it like this but you know just take two a4 papers put them together i find that it's more useful to talk in terms of, the, of these sizes because that's more easily understood by like compared to sheet half sheet and so on so that's an a3 together right a4 a4 a3 that is big enough to warrant uh, a big mixing area, at least like something like this, right? I hope that makes sense. <laughs> These imaginary sizes I'm showing you. Uh, Henny Shea, looking forward to some paintings of Morocco. Yeah, that's gonna that's gonna happen soon. Uh, I have at least four or five scenes that I would love to paint. Uh, some of them are more cityscapes. Some fewer nature. Uh, some are people at work. Uh, I found a few cool scenes of people working. So yeah, 
good things to look forward to. Uh, and some miscellaneous. There, there's quite a lot uh, you'll see. Um, some scenes I took pictures of and I'm like, I know it's going to be a nightmare to paint, but I really want to paint it if I could, uh, just because the, the technique is going to be very hard. But yeah, uh, Kanchan and Diran, hey, how are you doing? Good to have you back, Liron. Hope you had a great vacation. Pictures on Insta were very inspiring. Maybe we will see some paintings from the tour. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, definitely plan on it. Kelly Halligan, my biggest struggle is determining a good color for the painting. I'm learning from you to focus more on the light, mid, and dark tones rather than color, but it's a struggle. Yeah, uh, this is why I recommend just going with a with a triad, like a primary base triad that allows you to mix as many colors as possible, uh, and then maybe use like a speciality one or two colors, like a strong red, a strong blue that's very vibrant to get everything else, right? Um, but if you say like the right, the a good color for the painting, so that means actually like maybe mixing, how to mix the color you see as a as a more effective way of thinking about it. That stuff, that's something I'm still working on. I do have those color matching videos, a few of them, uh, which I think you may find helpful if you haven't watched. Uh, check them out. Um, just search Liron color matching watercolor. You should find that. Uh, Rebecca Hawk Art says, good afternoon from England. Do you take your watercolors on vacation in case you want to paint? If so, are there any travel sketchbooks you'd recommend? Thanks. So from the previous live streams, I know that people really recommend the Etcher uh, sketchbooks. E.T. It's I think it's E.T. Let's, let me check the spelling. I'm not sure. Etcher. E-T-C-H-R. E-T-C-H-R. Etcher. Just without the second E, um, sketchbooks. That's a that's a one that a lot of people have recommended. I haven't personally tried it out. Uh, I usually paint on just papers, not sketchbooks, um, unless it's for sketching, like pencil and so on. I very rarely take my watercolors, or I should say I take them, but I very rarely actually use them. Um, I really like to get sucked into the vacation just to to be a slob and just go with the flow. Now, in this example, I haven't said, I haven't elaborated, but it was an organized tour. So we were really led everywhere. We had a guide and everything all throughout everything from the airport all the way back to the airport and everything else. Uh, the guide was with us on the plane. He's from here. Um, but uh, I just like to devote myself to the trip and 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 I don't find it, it's, it's very natural for me to say, okay, I'm going to take a break here and paint. Um, I did do some sketching, so I can share some of that with you. Uh, I did some sketching in Morocco, just in my sketchbook. Some turned out really interesting, um, but nothing too, nothing I would be excited to share and, and post like the same day or anything like that. Just small, quick ones. Uh, but yeah. Uh, hey, Christine, thank you so, so much. Uh, Mauro uh, Medina says, hi, hi. Tal Manuel uh, Tipari says, Melech, which is king in Hebrew. Thank you so much. Uh, Joanna Owen, I've been using tin pencil case, tin pencil cases and sticking magnets on the bottom of my watercolor. So like the actual pens, right? I see some people doing that. That looks really cool. Uh, enjoying making uh, curated palettes. Yeah, that's fun. That's fun. Um, I see that here and there. Uh, Desling Action asks, thoughts on... Art hacks. Hmm, interesting. Let me just remove the mic here. I'm going to blow my nose. I don't want to make it too noisy. Um, art hacks, though. Let me block the camera. That's a hack for you. <laughs> if you don't want to, uh, people see you blow your nose. Um, hmm, interesting. I think the biggest one for me, honestly, it's not even a hack, but it's for anything. If you want to make sure you have the discipline to do it, to create every day, um, having everything prepared, that all you have to do is sit down and paint is very, uh, can be very useful. Uh, so that, that means also, I learned that at a very young age, let's say you want to uh, work out um, in the morning and you always barely get up and it's way too early and it's very hard to get that, you know, at the start of the day when you just get up. Actually, it's interesting. when you. I find when I just get up, I have the most motivation, but that initial, you know, hour may be a little um, groggy. So if you have your workout clothes ready to go, all you have to do is get up, put them on, right? That helps. Same thing in the same vein. If you have your painting station organized and it doesn't have to be fancy, that can really help. Now, I get not everyone has an actual room for a studio or an actual big space. So use whatever you can and make it as best as you can. So if you can just have a place that's empty, and you can just kind of put
put things out, put the palette, put the paper, everything else that can really help. Uh, if you can maybe tape the paper onto your board, ready to go for the next time, right? These preparatory steps can really help make sure that you won't delay, right? That you won't um, procrastinate. You'll just do it because everything is ready for you to go. You can just sit down and paint, which reminds me of something that a lot of people say to me that, that they get stuck and procrastinate and choosing the reference photo, right? So it's it's so interesting. Like a hack for that, I actually don't have, but maybe take your own photos. That's a hack. But you want to make sure that everything is in a row uh, for you to just ready. All, all, uh, all vegan ducks in a row. You just go for it, right? Um, so yeah. That will be a hack for you. Um, what else could be interesting? Like a big part of what I like is to automate the painting process. So anything I can do in advance to make myself faster as I paint, that's a good hack. And you can find out more about that in the frustration-free watercolor course. You can find it in the description box below. I believe it's the second link. Um, but that would be a very big one for me, like automating the painting process. That's an actual stage uh, in, the, in the course, automation. Um, you can paint faster just by doing a few simple steps, making a few decisions in advance, and it just makes everything more, you know, efficient. Now, let me think, what else? Is there an, an actual interesting hack? I actually need to look at my uh, work table. Hmm. I don't know. I'll think about it. Maybe something new will come up. Uh, but yeah, that's that's the is, that's the most hackish thing I have at the moment. Hey, Ant friends, uh, thank you for being here. Finally caught you live. Yeah, thank you so much. I uh, went a little earlier, so hopefully maybe someone benefited from it because some people, uh, it's too late for them, the, the live stream time. So, yeah. Content Endurance says, do you have plans for live videos on monochrome painting? Heard that's a good way to learn tonal values, but didn't work for my work yet. Uh, it either ends up too light or tend to darken the mood. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I can definitely do that. I pretty sure somewhere in the back catalog you can find live streams i did on this topic um <clears throat> maybe not purely monochrome like um let's use a different color than black but black and white i have a lot of them um and yeah it is a good way when you eliminate color and you just work with a specific value scale from light to dark whether it's a, 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 a like a black and white or it's um uh, what's the carbazol violet, which is a good one that goes pretty dark, or burnt sienna. If you choose one color and you work with that, of course, it's going to make the process much, much easier. And just like black and white, you have to do a value scale, kind of get familiar with the different, the, the, the scale that you can actually produce, right? Because some paints only go as dark. Um, but yeah, I, I can do something like that, definitely. Uh, hey, Mark, how are you doing? Uh, Mark in Madrid. I'm busy preparing my English classes, but I'll listen to this at the same time. Oh, cool. Yeah, if it hurts your productivity, uh, don't worry. It's going to be available later. on. I find that I have a very hard time listening to people talking as I do something that requires a bit more thought. So if I paint, that's cool. I can do that. If I do, if I organize the studio, I can do that. But if I'm actually planning something out or writing Anything that has to do with writing, that's impossible. So uh, don't let me interrupt you and stay productive, right? Um, Liz uh, Clyburn, hey, hey, from uh, Nim uh, Nimbin, north, south, west. So love that I got here. Uh, oh, I got it right. Is that north, north, south? That doesn't even make sense. North, south, west, no. Let's see what NSW, because north and south are opposites. New South Wales? Australian state? Is that the one? Let me know. I find myself Googling so much during these live streams. Please forget I said North South. Uh, I loved your uh, 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 Yves Saint Laurent garden tag on your holiday Insta. Lots of vibrancy there. Yeah, that's so cool. They just put an Yves Saint Laurent uh, museum in the middle of Marrakesh. That was the most fun day we had, actually, I think. We broke away from the, the group and just went there on our own. And it's right next to a botanical garden. It has tons of different plants and stuff like that. Um, there's a reason it's there. Yves Saint Laurent uh, had a strong connection to Morocco, and the, the, it influenced a lot of his uh, fashion choices and stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, definitely a fun day and a bit of a weird break in, in the atmosphere because when we were visiting New York, for example, we went to tons of museums. We got so tired of museums, but that was kind of the you know it's a big city and a lot of a good art scene. But there in Morocco, it's mostly views and the market and and some nature, right? Um, and and history and mosques and whatever. But then a museum is so out of uh, place in our specific trip. So it was very fun. Mark says. 
yeah, monochrome painting with say only two colors as a complementary pair. Yeah, that could be good. Like um blue and orange, right? Burnt sienna, French ultramarine. I should do more of that. It's been a while since I painted that way. <laughs> Uh, Richard Bennett, my little watercolor hack is having two cups of water when painting, one for warm colors, one for cool. That's a really good one. Elite hacks. <laughs> That's a good hashtag. Yeah, you could add that. It's, I'm doing the same thing. Uh, I have my water bucket with three wells, so I have one for just clean and warm and cool. <clears throat> Usually after 10 minutes into the painting process, I completely forget about these and just use whatever. Uh, but yeah, uh, Liz says, yes, I was listening to the Andy Warhol Diaries. Oh, cool, cool. Uh, New South Wales. Yeah, okay, I got it. <laughs> Hippie capital of Australia. That's funny. Uh, Megan, uh, morning from Idaho, USA. Love your live streams. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, is it actually a rainforest? North South Wales. Must be beautiful. Let me let me Google a photo. North South North South North New South Wales. South Wales. Let's see here. East West. <laughs> North, south. Um, oh, okay. Looks nice. Looks very, very nice. Um, nature. Yeah, that looks awesome. Looks like crazy views. Uh, yep. Uh, hey, Kelvin. Welcome. Uh, welcome aboard to this live stream. And thank you so much. Um, happy to be back. Uh, Hamza says, love your vids, bro. Thanks. Thank you so much. Hey, Dwayne. How are you doing? Uh, thank you so, so much. Greetings back to you. Uh, Liz, if I have two water cups, I guess I end up using both for any. Yeah, that's that's the same. I just forget. Uh, Nimbin is edge of the rainforest. Let me, okay, that's what I need to Google. Nimbin. Okay, looks interesting. That's a very, that's why I said hippie. It's funny. It has a really specific feel to it, right? That reminds me of um, some place I went to in Peru. Was it the Machu Picchu, like the town outside Machu Picchu? Just because of the mountains around it, that's really nice. Yeah, that's really, it looks like a very cool location. I love locations that have this specific vibe to them. One of these places was actually, uh, to me, Copacabana, but not, not in Brazil. Copacabana in, um, is it Peru? No, Copacabana, Peru? I think it's Peru. Yeah, Copacabana, it's not Bolivia. Because I was I was in one of them. I just don't remember which one. I think it was Peru. Um, you know what? Now I'm not sure. It actually looks like Bolivia. Uh, it's been it's been a long time since my South America trip. So yeah, you'll forgive me for that. Uh, but yeah, yeah, very specific vibe to the place. I love that. Uh, Marjorie Johnson. I thought my clock was messed up after a snowstorm caused power outage for 16 hours. Oh, that's rough. Earlier this week, wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, the weather was a bit crazy in Morocco too. It was nice. And then we had a day that burned us to a crisp. It was so hot. And then a cold day. It was so weird. Uh, but yeah, no, your, your clock's not messed up. I just went one hour earlier. Sorry. Uh, Liz, Nightcap National Park. Oh, thank you. You're giving me some interesting uh, things to Google. National Park. I love these views. You know, sometimes I find out a name of a place and then I find tons of reference photos to actually paint from there, which is really, really fun. Uh, so yeah, I may end up painting something from there. Um, Megan, probably some gorgeous scenes to paint. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, Kaisa Luoma, greetings from Finland. What is your most used brush and why? Uh, I'm confused with all these different kinds of brushes. Um, I would say, so let's set aside like brands and, and, and maybe even sizes. Uh, there are two, I guess two. So one of the ways to maybe categorize that's more effective is how hard or soft the hairs are. So I would say it's good to have both, right? Um, to have both softer bristles and harder ones that just get you better effects for the different needs you have. So having hard bristled brushes is very useful for getting small and accurate details and having that spring to the brush. That can really help. Um, but having softer ones could be better, for example, for foliage where you can kind of beat the brush over the paper and get all these abstract kind of sh shapes where you see some individual hairs making some uh, nice strokes on paper. Um, so I'd say having both is good. Now, my two most used ones, I guess, are the Escoda and Lebenson. So for the Escoda one, I have the size 16 Baroque. Uh, it's the Baroque one. Yeah, this one is my most used. It has a great tip. 
a few years in, a few years, a couple, like two, I think, something like that. Uh, this one in particular is from their uh, uh, plein air, like outdoor sets. So it looks a little different. It's actually collapsible. You can separate. I never do this. I just don't. I use it everywhere. So I just leave it like that. And the second most uh, useful one, which I just used like an hour ago, was the large goat hair by uh, Tracy Lebenson. This I find is more, it has softer, um, softer hairs, which is very useful for like um, big washes. I love to use it. Um, washes where I need versatility in the edge. So I want to do some foliage or I want to do some straight lines. Um, so yeah, I guess that the brand doesn't matter as much. The most important thing is that it's, it fits your needs and you can get that same effect with many brands. Uh, you can't really go wrong with, uh, these two though, because I, I've played around with a lot of Levinson brushes, a lot of Escoda brushes, and they're always fantastic. So, uh, yeah, you will find out that some brush you use, you just, once you try a new one, it's much, much better. One thing to have in mind too, is like water capacity. So a big brush has better water capacity, thus is suited to uh, larger washes. A thin brush can get you more accuracy, but it has smaller water capacity. Now, if you can have both in one, that's useful. So some brushes start very thick and then they end with a thin tip, um, like a mop with a sharp tip. That's a very good one too. I have um another one another Skoda actually here that does just that so this is the ultimo ultimo synthetico there we go this is size 16 very useful as well that tip it's not the best but it's actually really good and what i mean by not the best it's not Skoda's fault that's just the design of the brush right uh, it's a thick mop but you can get quite thin details with this tip um so yeah that's what I would kind of go. Now I do, I am working again on a proper list of all of my materials. I will have that included in the description box once it's done. Uh, I'm working on that and it's going to be full of affiliate links. So whatever you buy, if you buy through me, I make a commission on it. So that's nice. And you pay the same price, of course. Uh, Johannes, I'm struggling with choosing colors for my palette. Difficult to stick with only three colors. Would it be great to have an insight just book which uses uh, for his palette? Yeah, it's interesting. He's doing so many grays and nuanced grays that um, I think he's using whatever. Honestly, I think he has like a lot of primary colors, varying temperatures. So he'll have a, an ultramarine, a thalo, maybe a cerulean, um, maybe a Prussian blue, you know, and then for red, he'll have a, a magenta, a carbazole violet. He'll have all of them, I think. The, the way he mixes is more, he looks at the way it appears from the side, right? I can't say that's what's going through his mind, but the way it appears he's looking at it is as a spectrum of temperatures. So you can get different colors at varying temperatures. Um, and it's not necessarily a specific color that matters, but how you mix them. So it's not like he has one color that he swears by and he can't do without, not at all. He's using everything and, and anything together. Uh, so if anything, learn how to use the colors you already have instead of necessarily looking for like the perfect, you know, color. I have plenty of videos on the topic, but I like the colors in the Daniel Smith introductory set. You can find it on Amazon as well. <clears throat> that will be like the best, I think, for a beginner because you have both the cool and a warm of every primary color. You can mix almost anything with that. The only thing you're missing are the very bright colors. You'll have to get a speciality kind of tube for anyway, like very strong orange, very strong uh, turquoise, you know, stuff like that. Uh, uh, Diana, hello from Sarasota, Florida. Thank you for sharing uh, your talents with us. Thank you so, so much. And by the way, Johannes, I can try and do like a video on that. That could be interesting. Like the actual colors he's using just for fun, maybe analyze it with with a video of his. I don't know. I'll think about it. Uh, it's a good idea. Uh, Rebecca Hawk Art, many thanks for your answers, Liron. I also get sucked into the vacation experience rather than paint and end up taking lots of photos for potential paintings. Yeah, can see what you create. Thank you so much. Yep, I'm the same. Uh, it could be very useful to just make one or two paintings on location very fast even. Um, it can be very useful just to familiarize yourself with the scene as opposed to just taking the pictures, even though just the fact you were there is, is a, a huge plus, huge benefit. Uh, but yeah, Liz, uh, yes, many artists and makers 
ingress is the norm to smoke or use okay bombs and oils for your anxiety etc uh and to paint with calm yeah okay i guess there's some positive sides to to that being relaxed and chill uh copacabana is in brazil yeah yeah there are a few copacabanas actually so i'm just not sure if i was i i was in copacabana in brazil check was there for sure uh very just beautiful fantastic beaches but i was also in another copacabana and i don't remember i'm gonna verify i'm gonna look it up because i was there and i can i actually have a way of testing it out checking it so let me see here in my folder because i should have one from there and i can tell you exactly where it is um let's see here oh yeah copacabana bolivia I was in Copacabana, Bolivia as well. Uh, so that's that's next to the floating islands. What do you call them? Uh, let's see here. Lost it. Um, uh, oh, yeah, it's next to the Isla del Sol. Yeah, yeah. So I was there for sure. Copacabana, Bolivia. It's also close to Puno, I believe, the floating islands in, per in Peru. Does that even make sense? No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Uh, so yeah, it's going to be Copacabana uh, in Bolivia. That was great. There are a bunch of Copacabanas all around the world. I bet that there are some more in other countries. Uh, simply watercolor with Kian. What red color is your favorite? I think something like a pyrrole scarlet, very strong, very saturated. The thing is, I like it the most the way it looks out of the tube. Once it dries, it can look vastly different. So there's a bit of a caveat to it, but yeah. Uh, Sabella, uh, hi from Chile. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, I never know how to pronounce Chile in, in English. Is it Chile, Chile? In Hebrew, it's just Chile. But yeah, <laughs> thank you so much for being here. John Haleyrod, I hope you're well and had a wonderful birthday and holiday. Great to have you back. Thank you so much, John. I've seen a bunch of messages. I will read them as soon as I can. Sorry about the delay. Thank you so, so much. Pounds and dollars says, hi, hi, back. Hope you're doing well. All tune, Liron, you, uh, if you're looking for more amazing photos to study from, look up. Fan Ho, a legend photographer from the 50s. Let's see. Fan Ho. Um, okay, oh, oh, yeah, that's nice. That's very nice. That's cool. That's like perfect for a watercolor, too. And lots of black and white, even better. Hmm. That's neat. I'll definitely have that in mind. Wouldn't paint based on that, of course, because that's copyrighted, but that's a very useful, uh, I guess, resource. Uh, Mark, a quick question for you. Who are your current watercolor artists that you get inspiration from? Also, do you know the work of Pablo Ruben Lopez Sanz? Yeah, I actually am familiar with Pablo. Uh, I'm, I'm following on Instagram. Yeah, yeah, of course, I'm familiar with it. Highly realistic, lots of water, really, really good. Yep, yep, yep. Very familiar with his work. Uh, he's inspired by Joseph Zbukovic. Cool. Uh, what I like about him is there are a lot of artists inspired by Zbukovic, but I can definitely tell he has his own style, which is really, really fun uh, to look at. Just different, you know? Yeah, he has some great seascape and, you know, things like that. I absolutely love this artist. Um, I should probably do a painting masters. I haven't yet, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but I honestly, I don't have current inspiration at all. I'm trying to focus on my own painting. So uh, I'm mostly ignoring uh, every possible external noise. It's I go through these periods. I just try to focus on my own kind of internal things without being too influenced by other people's style and so on. Uh, so yeah, don't have a good answer. But yeah, I love it. his work. I can look at it all day long. Uh, Dwayne, what is the best way to grow your fan base on YouTube? Oh, yeah, we talked about that a bit in the previous live stream. Uh, on YouTube specifically, I think people just want the real, you know, the, the of course, scripted is, is okay. It's okay to do scripted videos, but people want to see, I guess, something real about what you do. There's the whole best practices, you know, you have to upload consistently and blah, blah, blah. But, but at the end of the day, it's your connection with the audience, whatever that connection is. For some people, it is the connection of maybe teaching or guiding or helping or whatever. For other people, it's creating discussions uh, and talking to people about stuff. For other creators, it's entertaining. If you find what your connection is with the audience and strive towards that, you find a problem and you solve it. 
that's the best way to grow. Then all the best practices go into play, like actually making the videos consistently, always trying to create good thumbnails, good uh, good titles that attract people to watch. I really try to improve my title and thumbnail game recently because that's like the number one thing that, that determines whether people will click on your videos, right? Um, so yeah, that'll be the main thing. But you have to start because it's going to be crap in the beginning do something like create something create 100 crappy videos i saw there's this good great uh youtuber uh and and business person i guess roberto blake roberto blake you want to check out his channel he's awesome uh i learned a lot from him uh, especially in the beginning but also now i'm i've recently re-watched some videos uh roberto blake youtube he's he's like one of the best resources on that topic um That'll be, I think, a good, good way to grow a fan base, just to follow these practices. Uh, but it all comes down to the connection you have with your audience. Uh, everyone does it differently. There is no set path. That's why it's so hard, because you have to find your own. So you start by doing something you like, hoping people take interest, and then you listen to feedback constantly. Uh, yep. Richard, I have so many brushes, but I only just <laughs> the same. I use maybe... I think in proportion, I don't know how many you have, Richard. So I have probably here in this room, if I had to guess, I would say at least 30 to 40 brushes, and I use maybe four, <laughs> maybe five. It's so funny. Five, probably. Uh, Liz, I spend too much time making sketches than not painting them. I get a little fearful, I think. Uh, I've heard you speak of warm-ups to paint. What uh, do you do as a warm-up? Yeah, so the best answer would be to check out that video. I have a few videos on warm-ups um, and kind of advanced exercises that will help you um, create a spark that will lead to the creation uh, session, the proper like painting session. But I will say make watercolor your sketches so there is something about making sketches that you enjoy and you're you feel confident with you just do right so ask yourself what would happen if you would feel the same about watercolors and maybe try and do the same thing you do with a sketch only with watercolors start small right do like a very small sketch in watercolor whether it's shapes based or lines even just draw the lines with watercolor because you're already there. You're already doing it. You're just doing it for sketches. How can you do it for painting? That's a question I ask myself a lot, not just in work, not just in art, but in life in general. I feel so confident doing some things, but so uh, lack confidence in other things. Why is that? That's so random, right? So how do you feel when you do the thing you're confident? When was the last time you did something you felt really confident about? How did it feel? What did you see what did you hear what were your thoughts like if you can recognize these details you can import them to some th something you're not as comfortable with that's the gold nugget of the day <laughs> i hope that helps uh feel free to ask, ask a follow-up but i do have a lot of videos just show you exactly like the warm-up so it's best to look those up um richard bennett high water capacity brush for painting and low water capacity for details yes or you can do high capacity for both uh, but i wouldn't recommend like a low capacity of course for big for big areas that could be a nightmare and <laughs> i've done that mistake before uh sabella how can i differentiate difference temperature between blues for example like how to tell the difference um you can actually find this information online like what the different temperature of every pigment is i think that would be the best way so you go to a website like handprint um that would be a really good resource <clears throat> and they kind of arrange the pigments based on their um under warmth or coolness ideally you want to develop a way to see it right um but just uh, refer to an actual resource that organizes them and then you start to realize that let's say uh ultramarine is a little warmer than thalo but not a lot it's a very minor differences and all of the blue or most of the blues are cooler than reds if you put them one next to another right um but yeah I wouldn't get too caught up on it. A lot of it is, again, playing around with it and trying to figure out like what works for you rather than like a rule that exists there out there and you have to follow. Uh, but yeah, um, yes, and believe yet too. Yep. Uh, 
uh, Beth at Cypher Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Thank you for being here. Uh, the last pronounced. Um, where are you located? I'm actually in Tel Aviv right now, Israel. That's where I live. Uh, and we visited Morocco. And some people think I live in France, in Paris, because I had a few videos, blogs of me in Paris, but I don't. That was just a vacation. Uh, Tidine Don, how are you doing? Hey, uh, from Green Bay. Sorry, your username always confuses me. But did you change the profile pic or was it always this cute corgi? I'm not sure because I remember a different one or maybe I'm confused. Hey, from Green Bay, Wisconsin, USA. Uh, thank you for the recent video on composition. It was really helpful. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I think it turned out a really nice video. Even It's pretty basic, but I think people found it useful. Um, I'm happy you found it useful. So thank you. Uh, Danielle Percy. Hey, Leron. As a beginner, should I avoid opaque colors in initial washes and leave for the end stages of a painting? Uh, not necessarily. If you have an opaque color that you know how to use and you enjoy, you can just use it. Uh, just try them out. Play around with them. See what result you get. Because at the end of the day, it's your eyes that need to like the result. So what should guide you, ideally, is your eyes, your taste. And if your taste likes uh, a, a lilac, for example, that's very uh, opaque, and you like that in the first watch, just do it. You know, um, To me, you know, of course, the process matters. But the end result is everything. If you get a result you like, who cares how you used it, right? I don't think there's a huge disadvantage to using opaque paints in the beginning, unless you're going for a specific look. Um, I don't have a lot of experience in, like, I'm starting to play around with opaque colors, as you've seen recently, in the later washes, in the latter washes, but not in the earlier ones. After I have some more understanding of it, I could give you a better answer, I guess. Uh, Karine says, hi from Sweden. Thank you for being here. Uh, Liz says, agree with the titles and thumbnails make a difference to how quickly I click through and watch. Yeah, that's just how it works. That's the sad reality of being a content creator. Uh, but it's fun. It's fun to play around with it. You know what's so funny? Usually when I think something will work, it doesn't. And when I think it won't work, it does. It's so strange. Um, and you also add, ah, I love the sound of that, making the watercolor sketch. Yes, yes, I'm trying that. Thanks. Yeah, definitely. Let me know how it goes. Just make that the sketch. It's so straightforward. You have to learn your own kind of levers and how to get yourself to do stuff. That's a big part of learning maybe to be more self-motivated and, and solve your own problems, so to speak. Uh, because you knew it probably at some place in your head. But just me saying it kind of maybe helps. So maybe you learn how to say these things to yourself, you know. Uh, that's what I try to do. Uh, Kelvin says, color temperature is just practice and practice is a little come natural. Yeah, like everything. <laughs> uh, Mark says, come on, guys, give Leron a like and subscribe. Thank you so much, Mark. Yeah, if you can drop a like on this uh, live stream, it'll be great. Uh, it usually means more people will watch it after it's done as well. Uh, so thank you so, so much for that. Much appreciated. I do have a fancy banner that asks you to drop a like. So here it goes. <laughs> um and we'll get a few more, and then we'll wrap it up in like five minutes. Let's see here. <laughs> That's the hard work, you know. Um, uh, Crystal Martin Art, that is the best advice I've ever heard. Wow, thank you so much. As long as your eyes like it. Yeah, that's just so important, you know. Uh, I'm scrolling back here because I want to. I want to check something. That's just how it works. I find that that's the most useful way for me to think about it. You know, um, you have to practice and do more and more and more and more. Now, that doesn't mean that you you know you you have to torture yourself and you're you're a failure until it's perfect. No, find something to love about everything you create. Uh, that's a big thing, I think. Um, White Reza, recently I painted some small portraits in two values from reference picture with two levels posterization. Really enjoyed it. Yeah, it's so rewarding. It's just, it clicks. It's so fun to do. Uh, Timmy, Timmy Wave. I make so many layers of watercolor and a lot of strokes, which makes the art look muddy and quite busy. Do you have a tip for it? Yeah, so try, see if you can paint in one go. So what do I mean by that? Doesn't necessarily mean a la prima like I do. Choose a shape that you see, mix the color you see, and paint it in one go. So if you see one color and one value in an area, paint that small area. Finish with that. Paint the next big area. 
finish with that. Paint, don't do glazes at all. Do it all in one go. It is possible. Uh, you just have to mix the dark enough or light, whatever it, whatever it is you need. Think of it almost like a paint by numbers where you just fill in the areas. Try and do that. Try and do it completely the other way around, okay? Because you probably over mix and you probably, you know, a lot of people will go through that. So try to just mix the small spot you see in one small area and work just like paint by numbers. Paint this section, paint that section. If the painting, it's better if the reference photo has fewer sections, simplified, you know, simplified values, simplified everything else. But even if it doesn't, try still approaching it in small shapes, right? Now, let me know how that goes. Because it's a common issue. A lot of you all have it. Uh, you got it, Daniel. Thank you so much. Uh, Kat says, thanks for your wet and wet demonstration video. I'm a beginner. And I used it to make a huge difference. Everything was... Uh, and it made a huge difference. Everything was going, getting muddy because I was try, I would try over and over. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Um, very happy it helped. Yeah, it's a completely different technique. It's a bit hard to uh, master, but it, just like everything else, you make it intuitive by practicing it. Uh, any, any tips for going big? Big eight feet on eight feet. Wow. So I don't even know, like eight feet to uh, to uh, centimeters or meters, I guess. Oh, that's huge. Two and a half meters on two and a half. Uh, have a lot of water, a lot of paint, and a huge brush. You just need to make everything larger. Some people just you put the paper on a wall because sometimes you won't have a big enough of a space. Then the one thing you're dealing with is gravity, bringing everything down. But it is possible, and I have done like a meter on a meter, something like that. Um, but you need more of everything. And it's. I find that it's very hard to do without a big brush in a big area for mixing. So if you have a palette, even with uh, double pans, it's still too small. Ideally, what you'd want to do is take like even a water bottle, cut out the bottom. I've seen some artists do that and mix in that. So you put, you actually take your um, tube and you do a bit of a, uh, put in a bit of a paste, the, the paint itself, like, like a toothpaste, and then bring maybe something and mix it with the water and mix a big, big quantity because you're going to need it. And use a, as big a brush as you can get, dip in and paint. Um, it's not easy. It's not something I have done, so I can't really give you the perfect answer, uh, but it is possible. Tie dye and Dawn. I have a lot of dye powder for fabric using dye powder, uh, dry powder. Sorry. Oh, okay. Dye, dry powder, very sparingly on wet watercolor paper makes an exciting effect. Color splits, huh? Have never tried it. I actually had a few uh, dry kind of powder pigments. Maybe I should try it out. Sounds really fun. Cat also learning the difference between dry and properly dry. Yeah, that's important. That's really important. Kelvin, remember you can turn opaque paint into transparent with just more water. Watercolor is the only painting medium that can do that. Yeah, that's that's actually a good point. Um, It'll probably be a little more opaque, right? Though will de still depend some to some extent on the color itself, I guess. Uh, but yep, yeah, that's a great observation. Uh, Paula Campbell, are you now starting at 8 a.m.? We're on daylight saving time. Yeah, no, it's not. Uh, we actually have a daylight saving time, I think. But no, it's just a special case today because um, I want to finish a little earlier than usual. We have a family dinner in the evening. So that's the only reason I'll go back to 9 a.m. next week. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, Marjorie, thank you for upbeat discussion this morning. Just what I needed. Oh, cool, cool. Uh, happy to help, Timmy. Uh, also, uh, Yvonne, we'll go over the rest quick and we'll wrap it up. Great session. Thank you so much. Thank you, John, for being here. Thank you, Yvonne. Thank you, Liz. Uh, do water color good at large. You can do it. You can do it. I plan on doing it, actually. I have, I have some cool plans for that. Um, Eileen, I do okay. Conversation. Let's skip. Uh, if it, you might want to use painting trays. As, yep, 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 yep. That's a great idea, Megan. That's how they do it. That's how they paint large. Um, uh, Kaisa, I always struggle with painting wet and wet. I feel no matter how much I wet the paper, it always dries too quickly. You think it has to do with the paper? Uh, so, what paper are you using? If you're using Arsh, Saunders, Waterford, even Fabriano, to some degree, it shouldn't be the paper. Could be a very dry weather. Uh, one thing you can try, and I recently learned that I'm going to try maybe is wetting both sides of paper and just putting it on your table. That could work too. Uh, some people say, and sometimes you need to do two 
like two rounds of wetting and then wetting again. That can happen sometimes. By the time you finish pre-wetting, the top is already starting to dry. So doing another pass over it can really help. Uh, and what would be good but affordable paper? Yeah, that those are the options. Saunders, Waterford, Arsh, Fabriano. Uh, there was another one because they're not really affordable, but there was one affordable that I keep forgetting. Stonehenge have some decent papers for sure too. Uh, thank you so much, S. Uh, yep, good, good recommendation, Marjorie, definitely. Uh, thank you, Luis. Uh, Lollipop Strawberry, hi Lauren, just doing digital art stuff on the computer. What did I miss? Yeah, just conversation, uh, general fun, kind of updating you on what I've been up to and what I'm planning to do and coming back from Morocco. Actually, I haven't updated almost at all, uh, but I will in a future video, like an actual video. Uh, thank you, Sabella. Uh, uh, Faiza says, what is the best cardboard for watercolor? So I don't know, actual cardboard, I don't know, but some people use UPO as a replacement for paper. So Y-U-P-O, that could maybe work. Um, but I actually just use paper. So that will be, again, for me, Arsh, Saunders Waterford. Uh, these are the main ones I use. Uh, Megan, I live in a dry climate and wetting both sides helps a lot. Cool. Yeah, uh, here it's not that dry. It's actually really, really uh, moist. The air is really moist. So I think we're, we have the opposite problem. It takes long to dry. Uh, but yeah, Bao Hong, yeah, Bao Hong is good too. Yeah, keep forgetting. Bao Hong, another great, great brand uh, from my current experience. Kat says, that's what I was learning, to let it dry once I can't. Yeah, definitely. That's huge. I'm, I still sometimes like the patience to do that, um, for sure. Can you do a video of face, face expressions? Oh, wow, that could be interesting. Because I barely do portraits, you know? I barely just show you how to paint portraits, but I should do that. That's that's a little more advanced. Even for me, I'll, I'll have to maybe... Uh, maybe in the future, when I get more experience in portraits, because I don't do a lot of them. Uh, thank you, Ted, for Ted to take. Uh, hope you're doing super well too. Liz with a great uh, recommendation for uh, well, not really recommendation, but aqua board. Yeah, that's I I've seen it in action. I think it really takes serious getting used to. That's that looks really tough. Uh, but yeah, let's let's take two more and we're done. I'm bad at sketching, so uh, resting fish base. I'm bad at sketching, so I have used a website that takes a photo and creates a black and white sketch. Oh, that's useful. Who cares? It's not cheating. It's okay. And all you have to do is paint, then yeah, that's that's fun. I trace all the time. Uh, Olivier says, hi, Laron. What about sky reflections on water, but still seeing rocks? Oh, that's tough. So I do have the process of the our pond, the little puddle painting I did. That actually shows a bit of that, but it's a tough effect to get and maybe i'll do a video in the future if i feel uh comfortable enough with it uh, it's it's a very tough subject i agree um the artist that was mentioned before pablo is really good at that you maybe you want to check out uh his work cat how long do you practice a day not nearly enough uh, i've gone through a time period where i didn't have enough time to practice and now it will change so that's one of the changes that i'm planning on doing especially now uh then i'm back from vacation i feel like i want to really take the next jump in skills so hopefully you'll feel a difference in the next year or so uh but in case yeah this is going to be it for today just one hour as i mentioned sorry that it's a little shorter if you can take a moment drop a like that really helps more people discover the live stream so i'd really appreciate it if you want to support me in any way you can find all the links in the description box, including the Patreon, if you just want to do a monthly small donation that helps in the critiques tier, be sure to check all of these out. I want to thank you so, so much for tuning in. I'm going to uh, check out in just a moment. Uh, again, there's a holiday, it's a holiday today, so family dinner, and we have a few serious preparations in the next couple of days, so uh, I'll have to make some uh, more time to get a bit of work done at least. Uh, but in case, thank you so, so, so much. Uh, ask me, as always, the questions in the comments. And I'll try and address ones that I missed in the live stream or that you know we didn't have time to even get to, right? Uh, so leave uh, your question as a comment after this is done and I'll be sure to at least try and go over them. Thank you so, so much. Really appreciate you. And I will see you in the next bit on Saturday. Hopefully, uh, hopefully I'll manage to edit it on time. I'm not sure. I think I will, though. So thank you so much. And apologies if I won't, if you won't have a Saturday's video, but you should have one. Uh, and we'll talk to you again real, real 